All right, good morning again, people. Uh, today I am back. Well, I am. I'm not back. I'm here at a new project in um, the area around Stavanger on a power line build. Um, today I'm actually taking part in the string team, uh, whose job is to um, string up the power line. That means pull up the wires and... Uh, okay, Jura, Rogozer, Kreno, 45 meter, Alinea, Kacheredo. This is in the Greater Stavanger area. <coughs> Taking part in the string team operation. Um, and the job today is we're going to move. There's a tower over there that connects the, uh, the fjord to the other side. This is a power line, a pretty big one, the one that's going down here. Uh, we're gonna do 40 loads now uh, from this side here and then over to the other side um, all being around one ton to about 1.2 tons and it's gonna be done with a 45 meter swing which is uh, close to 150 feet I believe all right so let's see how that goes so this here is a typical construction site. Um, there is uh, a lot of stuff they're having. Uh, what we're gonna do now is uh, a lot of uh, concrete blocks. Um, there's some winches, and there's a lot of other equipment. Uh, and I'm especially cautious about uh, things like big bags, because the consequences of having a big bag flying around uh, by the downwash would be catastrophic so got to be very mindful of that um, luckily today we have a lot of long line so uh, clearance is uh, well and good as they would say <coughs> let's see here okay so they have hooked it now let's see if we can pull some power on this thing I'm gonna try and find the wind Wind is more out of the other direction. RPM now increases. And just staying stable above the load. Focusing on having a light grip so that I don't over tension. Okay, comes off the ground at. These guys are from Croatia, so I don't speak their language. I have no idea what they're Morning. saying. Alright, coming back in to the uh, other side now. 112. We're at 1600 feet, so it's not very high. This place, nowhere in Norway really is. So elevation is not that big of a deal. But still, when you have a lot of vertical clearance or a vertical climb like this here and then to a plateau, it's very quickly that you can accidentally fly the sling into the ground. And so long as you're cautious and taking it slow, you will be uh, fine. The guys are giving good signals. And then they're going to hook it. So, I don't know, if, I don't remember if I said it, but there's 40 loads on this side here that we're going to move all of them to the other side. So, we're going to be here for a while. For sure. Okay, that's the power. I hope you get a good view and a good angle. Just pulling slowly, checking the power, making sure it's free and that it's lifted clear. 1 ton 50 within limits there are some steel there's steel everywhere so you got to be careful so you don't accidentally uh, hook into something that you forgot that was there or something like that which can unfortunately quickly happen if you are um, overloaded like there's too much workload uh, if there is um, unforeseen things something else changed they asked for something on the radio that you didn't plan for um, so always make sure you take your time when you lift up 
and to make sure that you are aware of your surroundings and that you are absolutely certain that you are lifted clear and free of the ground and until you're up into 20-30 meters above the ground at least um, because like power lines they um, they are all uh, under 30 meters uh, I would say in general uh, so the highest risk of collision would be below 30 meters so so long as you take your time there and considering uh, external factors like the wind and the weight um, taking your time will certainly make sure that you succeed and have no accidents or incidents which is always good okay coming into the next side here um, the same phenomenon is now messing with me the uh, cliff came from the ocean and then 18 1900 feet straight up in the air so it's it's really quickly for me to um, to fly this block uh, right into the ground um, so and also as you can see in the image there there's a container there uh, that you can actually smack right into the side of it if you're not um, considering that so just uh, just be careful okay so we placed it on the ground let's see if he just likes it there yeah he does Okay, so he's loosening the chains it doesn't seem like they are too stressed out about having a very very precise placement of things like you can uh, you can drop it on the ground as you kind of like okay clear of the towers falling power and just straight and level from here now I calculated the distance between land and the auto rotation distance um, it would be 1500 meters from one shore to the other so that would put me uh, like let's say if I fly above 1005 and the glide distance of this one um, flying at let's say 2000 for example uh, will give me uh, good time and good uh, possibilities to Go make uh, uh, to make and have uh, options in case of an engine failure. So it's hard to see, but right there, there's a steel construction. That one would be a typical example. That would be very quickly to. to accidentally smack into uh, on your approach uh, and like I said if you're careful you can see it down there now if I wrap the long line around it um, that's one thing but having forward motion and wrapping it around uh, at the same time is also something you need to consider now like I say if you're taking it slow and uh, and uh, using your time let's say that you do wrap around something then you will uh, start to feel that as a pull in the helicopter now if you're slow uh, you will have time to react to that and uh, maintain safety uh, if you are one of those guys who are super stressed out and are gonna set world records every day at flying um, you put yourself in a great risk of pulling the helicopter into a dynamic uh, situation where you can um, roll over and crash uh, <laughs> right in front of where you intended to fly to so um, my shout out to everyone is to take your time and um, and think that if I fly in this way I might make more uh, flight time without incident uh, which is better for everyone I like to say that uh, slow is smooth and smooth is fast so that'll actually be uh, in the end uh, faster and better result in my opinion okay chain goes off then yes we just chains put it down here and after this so then we finish with the machine guys again connect to the chains and again start with the concrete sounds good All right, so next up is um, wire pulling machine.
it's supposed to weigh in at 1.2 tons we will see now what it actually weighs because sometimes I do feel like it weighs more than what they actually say now these are <coughs> these are parted out like now first now comes the wheels uh, if you can see that in the image let's see here now I'm getting the signal to lift so again caution is, uh, is advised here uh, and we're gonna lift this clear of the engine body we're passing 1.1 ton let's see here there's 1.2 and it's starting to come there at 1.2 tons okay so now it's all about taking your time I'm just letting the helicopter pull slowly up and up and up because if I forget about the, the power lines and the other stuff now because my and uh, my brain is all swamped up with uh, this uh, machine thing uh, I might end up making a mistake Marky, push of it. Okay, all clear so power 90% 1.2 tons on the hook fuel is 123 so this is Justin, within limits Okay, so now I'm on the way there with the um, the winch wheels, and we're now uh, we're not quite at max takeoff power yet. Uh, but what you need to consider now is the fact that the wind plays a, an important role, and you got to watch out for that quartering uh, right headwind, so that you don't mess with your tail rotor efficiency. So what I'm going to do is, since I'm uh, at such a high power level I'm gonna try and fly it more so that I get the, the wind uh, more into the nose and don't risk um, uh, flipping the helicopter around because the tail rotor loses efficiency uh, watching the power now it's at 90% the weight is good um, and I'm feeling the tail rotor authority now because if it were to overpower me, I still would have a small chance to, to go on a go around. Um, and now <coughs> I actually have the, the wind left of the nose um, to compensate and, uh, and give me extra room for um, uh, losing any tail rotor authority. Okay, yes, guys, I know. I'm going to hand it to you slowly. Okay, so now they have it. They have this jig that they're gonna put it on. Um, let's see here. Let's hold it nice and steady. It's gotta go up, they say. And I'm I'm feeling that the tail rotor has the the good bite that I'm looking for. Um, and I'm just trying to play with it, nice and stable. And I think they actually hit the pins there, so that the um, the wheels are in its uh, rig. Now I'm just holding power, releasing. Okay, there's the signal, and actually the release, release, and confirm. Good job. Okay. Climb vertically. Good up,
thank you for watching for now. Uh, do me a favor though, do hit the subscribe button so that you support the channel. Uh, I would appreciate that a bunch. And uh, thanks for watching.